How can we have hope when many things in our culture seem to be going wrong? That is the question we will be looking at in this episode of Big Questions, Little Answers. So stick around. Hello, my name is Father Ambrose Little, and I teach philosophy at the Dominican House of Studies. Welcome to Aquinas 101, Big Questions, Little Answers, the series where I do my best to answer your big questions about philosophy, theology, and more. One of our viewers recently asked the following question. Can you help us to understand how to have hope while living in an insane society? Clearly, the Western culture has gone insane. How do we remain hopeful in such a mess? Can you make a video on this topic, please? Millions of us need hope right now. I was moved to answer this question because I come across a lot of people who worry about the state of the world. How can we have hope if things seem to be going so wrong? The first thing to remember is that our hope, Christian hope, is in the promises of God. Those promises are going to be fulfilled at the general resurrection when there is a new heaven and a new earth. And so St. Thomas Aquinas reminds us that our hope must be focused on the life to come. He writes, quote, We ought not to pray God for any other goods except in reference to eternal happiness. Hence, hope regards eternal happiness chiefly, and other things for which we pray God it regards secondarily, and as referred to eternal happiness. Just as faith regards God principally and secondarily, those things which are referred to God. That is an important principle for us to remember. Our hope must be in the promises of God alone and not in the present world. However, although we may know that this is where our hope ought to be, it can be hard to remember that when things seem to be going wrong around us. What I find helpful is to remember that even if all the things I hoped for in our world were happening, I would still not be satisfied because we are all broken people and we cannot find happiness and satisfaction here. As Psalm 146 reminds us, Put not your trust in princes, in a son of man in whom there is no help. When his breath departs, he returns to his earth. On that very day, his plans perish. No matter how well things are going, our limitations mean that we cannot hope for a life of rest and peace here. Our hope must be in God. And ironically, it is the fact that things are not going well that helps us to remember this. Nothing exemplifies that last point better than a reflection on the history of Israel, especially a reflection on the Babylonian captivity. Remember that God promised the people of Israel a nation of their own, and they had it for hundreds of years. Yet because of their lack of faith, God allowed them to be conquered by a pagan empire. Think about that. Think about how devastating that must have been. For to be conquered by Babylon not only meant that they could not rule themselves, but that their cities and culture were destroyed, and that even the temple of God was desecrated. And on top of it, many of the people of Israel were brought into exile. Now you would think that those in exile might abandon the faith of their fathers, but it turns out that the experience of exile taught the people of Israel to trust in God more than when things were going well. And so when they returned to the land of their fathers decades later, they came back with a stronger faith and with a greater willingness to be faithful to the Lord. This must be a lesson for us, for while we cannot control where our civilization is going, we can decide whether we are going to be faithful to the Lord and trust in his promises for eternal life. And if we keep our Lord and his promises before our eyes, we can be strengthened even in the midst of trial. Another example of this that I like to reflect on are the martyrs. Imagine what it would be like to be a martyr. On a human level, the martyr experiences failure. After all, the martyr wants to convert his enemies, but in order to become a martyr, one has to fail to convert one's murderer. So a martyr dies because at the moment of martyrdom, someone has not received the faith. But the martyr knows in faith, hope, and love that God's promises are true and that if we remain true to those promises, even unto death, we will be raised to eternal life in the end. The martyr conquers not because he perceives that he has converted those who hate God. The martyr conquers because he has hope in God 
and in God alone. It may be hard to see, but that is why we have the virtue of hope in particular. As St. Paul says, for in this hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. This hope requires a lot of trust, but the good news is that we have someone we can trust without any reservations. For the one who created the world and created us is the one who makes these promises. And we know that he is trustworthy and has our good in view. So let us remember the words of the psalmist and make them our own. Happy is he whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God, who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the sojourners. He upholds the widow and the fatherless, but the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever, thy God, O Zion, to all generations. Praise the Lord. Well, that's all I have for you today. Thank you for joining me for this episode of Big Questions, Little Answers. I look forward to seeing you next time. Until then, may God bless you and keep you in his grace. I hope that answers all your questions, but if not, please let us know by submitting your big questions using hashtag AskAFriar in the YouTube comments and on social media. And don't forget to subscribe, like, and share with your friends because it matters what you think.